Hey everyone, it's 10 Types, and today I'm going to be talking about the cards in Surging Sparks slash Paradise Dragana. This is the next expansion coming out that we have not seen all the cards from, or at least not all of them from Surging Sparks. And uh, this set is coming here. This is PokemonProxies.com, the website I'm using. This has some cards, it just very recently, uh, it has most of the cards coming very soon. Um, it didn't just added the Paradise Dragana slash Surging Sparks cards though. Um, and this is going to be, I think, a solid set we don't know too much about it though right now we've just seen some of the probably weaker cards from the set which are not like bad though definitely some pretty interesting ones which i want to talk about i have talked about most of these cards on the channel before but not all of them um but paradise dragana is going to be coming out in japan that's a japanese set on september 13th which is the same day as uh stellar crown the international set so um, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm not Japanese. Most people watching this probably aren't Japanese, but, um, even if you're not, these cards are coming relatively, like, like soonish, and should certainly, if you're interested in the Pokemon DHD, be on your radar, because they're cool cards that, um, and this will be, I believe, the last set before, um, rotation, we'll see, um, last set of the year, so, um, that'll be interesting. I think it'll be a solid set, introducing, um, Maybe not introducing new mechanics, but uh, adding on to the stellar mechanic, which we've not seen yet. Uh, there's this Flygon, oh, and a Lonely Executor EX as well. But let's just start at the beginning here. We do have Shinodeck, which is okay uh, if it's in the active. And I don't know if I've talked about this. I think I have talked about this card. If it's in the active, your points active is asleep. It's not a great ability on specifically a stage one with two retreat. That's kind of rough. Its HP is kind of low. Its attack's not good. Um, but it is an interesting Pokemon. Could be paired with Jinx EX to get an instant knockout, but... That's not super useful. Next we have Gouging Fire. This is an ancient Pokemon. So they are still printing ancient Pokemon at least throughout this entire year, which is really cool. I think ancient and future Pokemon have been pretty solid. And in terms of how good they are, they've been good. Not game-breakingly good, but um, not even like best deck in format good. They've been like nearing that level, but they're not like clearly the best deck or anything like that, which is nice. Um, if they were just super good, super broken, that would have been a problem. They are not. They are all basics, at least all the Pokemon are basics, and uh, there aren't many cards that aren't Pokemon from Ancient uh, and Future cards, which is a bit disappointing. Um, also, it does not look like we're going to get some like third variation like we did with the battle style, so that would be honestly kind of weird. It would be like current Pokemon. So I guess I guess we do have current Pokemon, but that's just uh, every Pokemon that's not Ancient or Future. But... um. Yeah, so we got Gouging Fire, though, for two Fire and a Cowless, uh, 100, but if your opponent is four or fewer prizes remaining, it does 170. This is okay. You do have certain buffs and things like that, and it's not, like, that hard to pay, but not that easy to pay either. It's just kind of okay. Nothing super crazy here, but it's a solid card, not a bad card by any means. Next, we got Black Hurum EX, uh, and this is a card I have not talked about on the channel. I think at the time of recording, this is the newest, or one of the newest cards revealed. It has an attack Ice Age here for three Cowless, 90. And if your opponent's active is a dragon Pokemon, is now paralyzed. That's pretty good against Virgil Draco V-Star. Uh, Virgil Draco V-Star is, you know, it's a dragon-type deck. It's in the name. Uh, and also, oh, also I think this is the first Black Hurum in a while. But, I don't know, Black Hurum is like an okay Pokemon. But also it's like, it's two Pokemon put together. Um, but they're also like similar. Any, anyways, um, so we've had Kyurums and like Zekroms before. But um, also it does for the Water Water Colorless Colorless, 250, 30 to itself, and it has 230 HP. This is okay. Nothing super special but with Black Frost, but it's not like a bad attack. You could put in like Champabax Caliber or something and have value out of it. But of course, you know, the big attack here it's Light Sage 90 and Paralysis on Dragon Pokemon. Paralysis means they can't attack or retreat next turn. You can use this over and over again until you just knock them out, though. So, um, this card's pretty good. Kind of hard to power up. Not, like, super hard, especially for some decks, but some decks can't really power this up very well. I think Black Hero EX is an okay card, and certainly a solid counter to Rishi Drake if we start. But it's not, like, an auto-include. It's kind of awkward, so it, it's just okay. Next, we got Quaquavel. This card, I think, is okay. I don't think it's really bad, like I've heard some people say, but it's not great either. Once during a turn, you can put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck if you do draw till you have five cards in hand. Notably, this is a, this is directly worse than... Well, it's a, it's stronger than Barrel, but it's on a stage two, which is a big downside. Its stats are a little bit better than Barrel, but not, like, that much better. So that's definitely a bit of an issue. And um, so it's worse than Barrel, and there's also Beauty Fly. It's probably worse than Beauty Fly. Um, it's pretty similar, but that's the stage two. doesn't see any play. However, the barrel, as well as Beauty Fly, will be rotating in, um, I don't know, whenever rotation is, at the start of next year at some point, so you can't play those cards anymore. You can play Quaquavel. Also, Quaquavel has 
a bunch of other useful Pokemon in its evolution line. Nothing insanely good, but this is pretty solid. You can play this with the Energy Acceleration Coquavel. There is an EX that's an attacker. That's okay. It's it's not great, but it's okay. Um, but the big use here is going to be um, playing Coquavel, uh, this Coquavel, with the other single prize Coquavel to accelerate energies, to have a few different things going on here. Um, certainly, Coquavel here is a solid Pokemon with like solid stats nothing too crazy it's not like great but as a support pokemon it's okay certainly one retreat would be super nice to retreat is definitely a bit of an issue because your opponent can you know get this pokemon stuck in the active you could put this in something like chimp havoc's caliber especially post rotation and that might actually be good i, I don't know it's a little sketchy but you and you don't have Irida either because that'll be rotating but you will have rare candy and um, potentially water Pokemon search. I don't know, but if you do have it, you could put it in the deck. And um, I think Quivel is an okay Pokemon with some kind of fun ideas. Next we got Smoochum. This is an okay Pokemon as well. It's a baby Pokemon for one color, or sorry, for free. Uh, Happy Kiss and 30 HP, of course, free retreat. It does have weakness, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, search your deck for two basic Psychic Energy cards and attach them to your bench Pokemon in any way you like, then shuffle your deck. That is, in my opinion, pretty, pretty okay. Um, it can be to any type of Pokemon. It could be to Dragapult EX or presumably previous evolutions of that. Probably the Dreepy, maybe Draycloak. So that's interesting. You can't clef on. It's kind of a setup-based stack. So it's not great. There are other ways to get the energy on too. So there are some serious limitations. Also, sorry if there's background noise. I don't know if there is, but there might be. Um, but yeah, Smoochum's okay. I don't think it's a bad card by any means. I don't think it's a great card either. And I'm not exactly sure we'd play this in. You could play it with, you know, Spathra EX or, uh, I don't know. It's not great, but it's not like that bad either. Uh, it's, you know, free attack, free retreat, so it does value. Speaking of free retreat, we got Latias EX here in its ability Skyline. By the way, these attack and ability names might be different, but they should be translated correctly in terms of what they actually do. And this has your basic Pokemon in play of no retreat cost, so that's really solid. It has a retreat cost of two, but it, it, it's free, right? Um, so... This is pretty good. Like, basic decks are good right now. They're not, like, necessarily the best. They probably are the best decks in the game, but they're, they're not, like, by far the best decks in the game. But, of course, every deck plays basic Pokemon. Basic Pokemon aren't really played as engines. I mean, they kind of are. You have Pheasant Dip to EX, Squawk Ability EX. Um, you have Pecoron EX, but that's very different. Um, and just, like, in a lot of ways, certainly does not need this. But then um, you have uh, Luminion V. So you got, like, some... But usually you're not playing too many of them down. They have like a one retreat anyway, so it's not like that big of a deal. I think Latias EX though is good in something like maybe Raging Wall Ogre Pond if you have some weird starter. Um, because you don't really want to be manually retreating. Even if you can retreat your Grass Ogre Pond, you're doing less damage. So that's definitely a bit of an issue. Uh, you also can do 200 for 3 Psychic, or 3 energy, 2 Psychic, and a Colorless can attack next turn. But that doesn't really matter much. Uh, I think Latias EX is a an okay Pokemon. Um, I think the ability is really solid, but we'll see exactly what the meta is looking like. Like, you're never playing this in Iron Thorns EX. You could play it in, um, you probably aren't playing in Roaring Moon EX. It, like, has some value, but also you have Pekka and EX. So, like, Pekka and EX is a switch. It's not just uh, allowing you to retreat for free, but it is a switch in case you get hit by Paralysis or, or like, um, your opponent has Snorlax, which will be rotating, but there is Snorlax and, um, other things like that. So, Latias EX, though, I think is a pretty, um, it's a pretty solid Pokemon, but not the best either. The Latios, unfortunately, is not very good. Uh, 50 Snipe for 2 or 110 for 3. I mean, it's not like the worst, but it's not particularly good either. It's a very mediocre Pokemon. We got Flittle, which is, you know, it's, it's Flittle. Um, and then we have a Spathra here, which has Mystic Eye, which is um, Devolve when your opponent's evolution Pokemon by putting the highest stage evolution into their hand. Uh, also, you can do 60 for 2. The second deck, really bad. The first attack's, like, teamed evolution. That will rotate in, like, two years, but also, like... Or, like, it'll rotate before this card, but also, um... This, this isn't very good, right? This is not a very good attack. It could be useful in certain scenarios, but it only devolves one Pokemon. So, right now, it, it's useless. In the future, it could be niche, but not great. Um... What Gimme Ghoul is this? Oh, this is a different Gimme Ghoul, apparently. Um, we got Trap Inch Rubrava, and then we got Flygon EX. This is a really interesting Pokemon, which says switch this with one switch this with one of your bench Pokemon, 130 for one fighting, uh, and then for water fighting metal, you do 100 to one of your, sorry, to each of your points, EX and V, which is pretty good if you can pay it. Its HP is, like, not that high. The attack cost is super hard to pay. Not impossible, but very difficult. And, um... 
No, okay, it's not like there was stellar stuff or uh, terror support, which is specifically intended for stellar Pokemon like Flygon EX with like the crystal pattern. Um, and then Storm Retreat is okay. I think these are like okay attacks. It's not like super good or super bad. I think it's like okay. Um, somewhere like B or C tier, if I'm thinking of it on a uh, tier list. Actually, no, probably C tier, but um, this is a fun Pokemon. Then we got Passimian for Finding Carlos, 10 for each of your basic Pokemon in play. You know, obviously, the idea here, you have all basic Pokemon, you probably have area zero under depths, giving you a bench of eight, plus you're active, giving you nine Pokemon. 180 for two is, is solid, nothing like insane, but pretty good there. Um, is it good enough? I, I don't know. You don't have like HP buffs or a lot. Well, you could get HP buffs, but you don't have a ton. Your HP isn't like that high, but it's not bad. This so we got Klefki, just could one draw two for one colorless or 20 for one colorless as well. It's, it's not very good. Um, we'd be played in random battles though, which I might be bringing back. Um, I gotta, I, I'm busy right now, but I do have some fun plans coming up. Uh, next we got our Kaludon EX, which has its ability. This is a really cool card, by the way, um, but alloy build. Um, when you play this Pokemon to evolve, from sorry, from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may attach two metal energies from your discard pal to your metal Pokemon any way you like, which could just be to our Caledon EX itself, which has 300 HP on a stage one and only two retreat, which is not that bad. And on top of that, our Caledon, um, the single prizer allows you to have free retreat on Pokemon with metal energy attached, I believe. So that's pretty cool. I don't think it's just metal Pokemon, uh, but they need the energy attached. But someone correct me down below in the comments if I'm wrong about that. Um, also, by the way, anyone watching the video, make sure you subscribe, like, um, that stuff. But anyways, um, Metal Defender, 220 for 3 metal, which is very payable with the ability. And it says, during your points next turn, this Pokemon has no weakness. That's, like, good, I guess. I, I mean, it's certainly better than not having that effect. But also, um, like, fire is not very good. Charge DX is good, but also it's not fire. So that's not great. I guess it protects against Radiant Charizard, but like, come on, that's like played. You know, I certainly played some, but it's not like a meta defining card or anything like that. So, um, you know, our Caladon, like, the removing weakness is okay. I'd certainly rather like take less damage or something like that. But it's a solid Pokemon, solid damage, um, just like solid stats, self sufficient, pretty good card. Can you be used to power up other things as well, like Dalga Vista? Well, that's informative together, so pretty cool. Um, by the way, this is 7A, that's going to be, it's like after 7, so, anyways, um, then we got gold, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is, because, um, yeah, Twilight Masquerade was the second set, the first was, um, what was it, it was one of the Paradox sets, it was Temporal Forces, there we go, and then you had Twilight Masquerade, now we're going to have Stellar Crown, and then we're going to have, uh, Surging Sparks, so this will be part of that. Then we have Goldengo here. This is a pretty interesting Pokemon. Goldengo EX is a solid deck right now, not like great. This one I think is not that good personally, but I, I just don't see it, so it's, I'm underrating it some. But Rich Strike from one metal, um, it says it does 30, but if you evolve from Gimme Ghoulish Turn, it does 90 more, so it's a single prize that can take knockouts. Its HP is like pretty solid, but also if you're surviving hits, like you're not doing anything next turn, unless you can use Surf Return for three colorless, which is a hit and run, shuffle this Pokemon, all cards attached into your deck. That's theoretically a little bit interesting, but um, I think it, it could just be used for the first attack in Goldengo EX decks as a single prize attacking option to force your opponent to take extra prizes. I think that is a valid use case, and this card might see some play, not for the second attack, but that's not bad. You can pay for it with a double turbo plus in the metal. Well, there's an informant together, which is a decent chunk of time. It's at least three months, I'm pretty sure. I think it's like I think it's like three months uh, in in international release. Not sure about Japan. It's kind of weird, but... um. Surf Return is an okay attack, um, not bad by any means, but also not great, and that was going to see play for, alone, uh, in my opinion. Alone Executor EX here is a pretty interesting card with um, really high HP, 300 for state on stage from EX. Our Kaladin also having that really high HP, you do have three retreat, but for, um, it's a dragon, it's a stellar, which is kind of cool. For um, Grass uh, Water, you can do 150. Choose any number of basic energy from your hand and attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. This is like okay damage output, but you'd certainly rather it be higher. And you can accelerate a lot of energy, and there are ways to get those into your hand, but it's a little sketchy. Then you have Swinging Sphere, which says for uh, water, sorry, grass, water, fighting, flip a coin. If heads, your points active is knocked out. If tail, uh, active basic is knocked out. If tails, one of your, uh, knock out one of your points, bench basic. By the way, the tail seems like better here, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, this is okay. I think the sniping the basic on a bench is really good, but the this forces your opponent like or this forces you to have to essentially gust up a basic two prizer into the active and then also have 
your opponent have a basic EX on the bench, which like can happen. It's definitely something very possible. I mean, I guess Fujimbo Ogre Pond 2, this will be like pretty good, but also um that's kind of niche. But I think this attack is okay, specifically within Vegeta Drake V Star. I think Alone Executor EX will be put will be played. It's actually of higher HP than alone than uh, Richard Draco V Star, so we could see this deck on its own. Its second attacks are really sketchy. Uh, it could just be completely useless in certain matchups and in certain times you just flip uh, heads and your opponent doesn't have a basic and active and then you can't do anything. So that's not great. Also, I believe Rabska protects your bench from this. Not 100% sure on that. I'm pretty sure it is though. Um, I'm pretty sure that it does. Uh, Mist Energy certainly does um, protect any Pokemon from this, but um, depends on the coin flip and where your energies are. But I think Alone Executor EX is like kind of fun, and or it's it's pretty fun. It's kind of weird. Uh, the first stack is okay. We've seen attacks like this a lot in the past, though. I imagine many people like don't really recognize that they've seen it before, but they probably have on other cards that just aren't very good. So um. Yeah, it's, it's not an attack that's guaranteed to be good, but I think a Venture Draco V-Star is an attack that carries you on to the next Pokemon is good. Um, we do have Dragonite and Standard, though, which doesn't see play, but I think this is okay. Um, and then the second attack is, like, solid as well. But it's not a great Pokemon. I'd say it's a consideration in Venture Draco V-Star. Next, we have Altaria. This is another consideration in uh, Venture Draco V-Star, I guess. There's a Cyclozar like this. I don't know how much damage it does, to be honest, but uh, it's a basic, it's it's a little different. But um, Humming Charge, Search for Energy, and attach them to your Pokemon, but that's not very good. Cotton Wings, though, for Water and Metal, 100, and on uh, Coin Flip, you're immune to all damage and effects with attacks, attacks done to this Pokemon. That's really good. Obviously, on Heads, on Tails, it's it's not good. Um, again, could be put in for Reggie Draco V Star as an annoying Pokemon. Then we have Dialga. Buster Tail 160 for 3 is not, like, bad, but it's not really useful in much. Uh, but then we have maybe a Lost Zone Kudra, I don't know. But then we have Time Control, search for two decks, and put them on top, uh, sorry, two cards, put them on top of your deck. Um, you shuffle your deck, but those two stay on top. And um, this is solid. It, it has some use cases as, like, a control card, but there are cards better than this, so ultimately I don't think this card's very good. We got Swablu, Roughly. Then we got Braviary, this is kind of interesting. Um, you gust a Pokemon on your opponent's bench into the active, do 40 to it. It's like, okay, we see attacks like this, actually a bunch. Um, it's not great, though. Then we have Helper Bell, which is an item card. You can only use this if you go second and on your first turn. Search your deck for a supporter, reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle your deck. This is obviously good at turn one, going um, going second is a very good card. Uh, going first, you can't play it at all. And um, even if you could, you couldn't play the supporter. So Helper Bell is kind of sketchy um, because it's only good one turn. You can't search that with Arvin. I mean, you could, but it's bad because then you can't get, like, you can get a supporter, but you can't play the supporter you just got. So that's obviously bad. Um, then there was also, um, with this card, like, wh what do you do with it after turn one, right? So I don't think it's very good. Uh, I honestly was never a big fan of Battle VIP Pass. I knew it was good, which it's a card like kind of like this, but... Um, it was a very good card. I just just never a fan of it, so I'm not a fan of this either. Uh, it's probably a little better than I'm thinking it is, and might see play with Pokestop Focus decks that are very turbo based that like needed probably Professor Size Vitality decks. But also, it's not great. I don't think it'll be that. I think it'll be kind of bad. But um, at the very least, like it has some serious issues where it's just clogging up your deck and not doing anything because you can't even play it. It's just like stuck there. And then we have Dusk Ball getting reprinted from a long time ago. Look at the bottom seven cards of your deck. You may reveal a Pokemon you find there, put it into your hand, then shuffle the other cards back into your deck. Uh, interesting way interaction with the Iono here. It's like Great Ball, but it gets from the bottom. If your opponent Ionos you, you can guarantee you get a card on the bottom of your deck. But you can't search this out with Arvin, because once you search it out with Arvin, then your deck shuffles. So you don't know what's on the bottom anymore. Um, yeah, Dusk Ball is not a great card. Obviously, it's not like... The, the worst card, it, it's okay. It, it might be better than Great Ball, or it might not. I, I'm not entirely sure, but Great Ball is well. It's it's not great, you know. Um, that's like the joke about it that everyone makes. It's it's not a great card. Um, in Norse Dusk Ball. Oh, Disrupt the Letter is actually the newest card I believe at the time of recording. This is an interesting card. It's a slight variation of Peking Red card, which is another card from back in from quite a while ago that was I don't think very good like at all. But your opponent uh, counts how many cards they have in their hand, shuffles some, puts them on, puts them at the bottom of the deck, and then draws that many cards. So this is like a hand reset for your opponent. Um, so you don't see their hand. So if this is like a um, kind of mind gamey card. We need to like hand read your opponent some, but it's okay. It's not great. It's kind of bad, but if you can make good use of this, especially if you can use a card like a Zubat or something to see their hand, this could be really good. Uh, you could technically spam this. 
turn one going first and uh, essentially guarantee that your opponent has a bad hand. How useful is that? I'm not entirely sure if that's really a viable strat at all. You could also pair this with like your six machinations to put them down to a really small hand and then shuffle it. But like really small, it's only three cards, right? So um, it's it's okay. I think this card's not bad, but it's also not great. Then we have Megaton Blower. Just get all special energy and tools attached to all your opponent's Pokemon um, in play, and then a Stadium in play as well. This is like okay. I mean, it's good against Lugia V Star. Is it good against anything else? Um, it's not great, you know. As your ace back, it's kind of bad. But when you get a blower, it's an okay card, I'll say. Um, because control, well, it's good for control, right? You don't play it in control. I guess if you have another deck that's bad against Lugia, but even then, I don't know if this is enough. I think it's good in control against Lugia, though. Then we have Dragon's Pokemon. Oh, sorry, Dragon's Potion. Heal 60 from your active Dragon Pokemon. Obviously. Dragon decks, aka Richard Draco V Star. There is a Raging Will Ogre Pond, which is okay, but it's not that tanky. Um, but Richard Draco V Star is, uh, wait, yeah, Richard, sorry, Raging Bolt EX is not that tanky. Richard Draco V Star is more tanky, I guess, um, especially with certain like combos you can do, or assuming good to V Star, you can get pretty tanky, but you can Dragon's Potion. I think this is a viable strategy to buy yourself an extra turn. Uh, you probably need a few copies of this, though. Will it make it into the deck? I think it is possible. It's not a great card, but it's an okay card. Counter is the next card up, and this is another reprint. Um, this is like actually a reprint, and I think Dust Ball is actually reprint. Reprint um, destructive letter it is not, but Counter here is says if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, aka you're losing, um, on prizes, then the attack of the po uh, the attacks of this Pokemon, sorry, the attack of the Pokemon this card is attached to, plus one colorless less. So that's like. That's good, uh, obviously. I don't I don't know. I haven't thought about this card too much. Like, I don't know exactly its implications on the metagame, but it does allow you to attack easier with cards. This card's really good. It's one of my favorite cards um, ever. Maybe it, it's certainly cool. I like um, being able to attack easier, so that means you have more attacking options, and this will definitely see some play. I don't know exactly how much play it will see, but it will see some, and I'm looking forward to playing with it. It's a very good card. Next, we have Drayton, a supporter. This one, I think, is really underrated. Um, there is, how many? Three supports from the set. I don't remember what Lucia's appeal does. Um, oh, that card's not good. But uh, Surfer and Drayton are, like, both okay supporters. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. You may reveal a Pokemon in a train you find there. Put the others, put them into your hand, shuffle the others into your deck. Obviously, you know, it's like Great Ball. It's like Dust Ball for getting the Pokemon, which is not a bad card. Great Ball is not a bad card. It's not a great card, but it's not a bad card. Um, but then getting any trainer is solid. You need really an item. That tool or a stadium could be okay um, as a supporter. You know, you can't play that. So it's not like terrible to get a supporter if you have all the stuff you need in your hand. But then why are you playing this card? So, um... Drayton, however, I think will be pretty good when you compare this with um, a deck that's pretty high in items. Not like super high, but decently high. Maybe rare candy deck, so you can help dig for rare candy. I think this card's solid. If you look at Iridite, Irida is really good, but only gets water Pokemon. This can get any type of Pokemon and can get items too. It's not obviously, it doesn't search your whole deck, but it is solid. I think Drayton's a very decent card uh, and one that I am a big fan of. Not like a great card or a consistent card, but a solid card. Once we got Surfer, which is a supporter, switch in uh, your active with one of your bench, so it's a switch. Then if you do draw till you have five cards in hand, this will be drawing somewhere between two and four cards, I think. I uh, could draw five, but that's, you know, that's kind of risky. You're getting rid of all your cards, and you don't really want to do that that often. Um, you do want to draw as many cards as you can, but you don't want to discard your whole hand. But um, I think Surfer is definitely a pretty solid card, allowing you to obviously just draw cards, switch. It's a... Uh, it's a solid utility supporter. We see utility supporters like Kieran, um, Terra Scenario, and Penny are like kind of uh, utility utility supporters. I, I mean, not draw supporters. I guess Boss is like a utility supporter, but that's different. Boss is, you know, the best card in the game. Um, so I feel like, yeah, I, I don't know, I just don't count it in that. But you have Boss, but then you have other things like Penny, Terra Scenario, um, Kieran, which is similar. We have switching and then a damaging option. Um, Lots of other supporters that aren't like draw setup supporters, uh, but this does have a draw element as well, where it is drawing you cards, is doing something that you might want as well. Uh, just depending on the metagame, how important switching is. Right now, switching is like okay. Um, it's not like amazing. People aren't playing four switch in every deck or anything like that, but they are playing um, some like control, like uh, trapping slash locking cards. So Surfer is solid. Also, it does a switch that's not an item, which could be useful against something like Bayonet, EX, or Venomoth, or whatever. 
Next, we got Lysia's Appeal, um, which says switching one of your opponents' bench basic Pokemon to the active. The new active is now poisoned, or sorry, is confused. Um, I don't know when Boss is rotating, if it's been reprinted this year. I haven't paid attention. I don't expect it to rotate anytime soon, though. Uh, this is worse than Boss if people are playing any evolution Pokemon. I guess this is better than Boss if they're playing um, all basics, but I don't expect that to happen. Um, and then. I guess if you're playing four boss, you want like a fifth boss, you could play this, but also like, why are you, like, why do you want five boss? And if you want five boss, play prime catcher or counter catcher and Pokemon catcher probably, I mean, this is okay. It's not like a terrible card, but it's directly outclassed by boss. So just confusion is, is not very good. Um, this is usable in control decks. So it's like, okay in that, but you want to be probably gusting evolution Pokemon, especially in evolution meta, where if you gust a basic, they can just evolve it. Maybe, not all the time, but certainly there's a possibility, and that's really bad. They just evolve out of confusion. So, yeah, at least his appeal is not great. Then we have Rich Energy as well. This is an A-spec card, specifically, of course, an energy, a special energy that says it provides one colorless, but on play you draw four. And that's like, okay, I guess. Drawing four is obviously good, but also this is like re really weird and awkward. So Rich Energy, unfortunately, is not very good. Uh, unless there's some certain combo to like loop it that's actually good there are ways to loop it i'm sure but they're not great but anyways that's the little preview of paradise dragana slash surging sparks which will be coming out soon so i'm really excited for uh, paradise dragana surging sparks is not like that far away but certainly a bit away but i'm looking forward to the set looking forward to stellar crown a lot i think it's really good i think surging sparks has more depth to it stellar crown has um four types of cards it has um the really good cards, like 10 or so, like obviously really good cards. It's got like 10 or more so like underrated cards, I think, that are really good as well. They're, they're mostly control cards, but they're really good. Um, then it has like like 10 or 20, like just weird janky cards, which are not great. Um, and they're like kind of fun though. They're not bad cards. They're not like terrible cards, but they're not great. Uh, and then it also has just a bunch of just filler stuff because of, I don't know, Pokemon being weird. Uh, they like released products that are like kind of weird and generic and then they like put all into one set which is stellar crown so that's not great uh the set still a miracle which is on this website here um this is still a miracle it is a hundred and no, how many cards is it it is 102 cards which um i don't know if it includes alternate arts looks like it goes up to card uh yeah 102 so there are 102 cards but then there are 194 cards and no 143 cards in our set which is still kind of small but a lot of those the rest of those um the cards the rest of the 41 cards are just not very good unfortunately like not all these cards are good. like lady but like w what is this but um like lydian's cool cradilla is cool um carnivine's obviously not that cool we're just looking at it's kind of boring but um these are like okay cards but there's a bunch of like filler but anyways that's all for today's video i hope you enjoyed consider liking subscribing and joining the channel as well to support me um that's a way you can support me. You can also support me through supers. I mean, you can just, the best way to support me is liking, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff. Um, so that's the way you can support. You're like, oh, I, I like the video. Um, turn notifications on, all that good stuff. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, comment down below which of these cards you're most excited for. But I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'm excited to see you in the next video.